Okay, uh, so I put 90 minutes in my clock yesterday, I just seriously ran out and uh, people were telling me, uh, we sort of missed the whole point of your whole thing, uh, which was a real pity because I, I thought I'd given it, but clearly I missed it. So uh, just a bit about me, I'm uh, Glenn Clyde and I have been, uh, sorry, I was speaking to the device uh, instead. Uh, so uh, yesterday I said uh, mistakenly that I had been using Delphi and Turbo Pascal uh, for 32 years. That's actually wrong. I, I mean I've been a developer for 32 years and 24 or so since um, uh, uh, I in Turbo Pascal and um, at, uh, Delphi. So apologies to people yesterday. I've been trying to make up stuff. So I, I got that hint when uh, Marco said Delphi's only been out for 22 years and I thought, hang on, clearly my sons are wrong. And, and they were, so, so I'll just clarify that. Um, I've been a Doug since 2000. Um, you, I've, I've been very quiet. I've been uh, living in the suburb, never getting to the city, that kind of thing. So I have been around. I've been trying to be a good uh, uh, ADUG citizen the last year or so, but I'm now working in the city. Um, most of my uh, career, I've actually done quite a few things. I'm actually a marine scientist and also a um, medical scientist. And, I uh, worked in uh, health for a long time and also finance. So, uh, and mostly in corporate arena. So, um, so the stuff I'm talking about in general um, is focused on corporate, the things I found in the corporate world. And, and while we're having a little bit of trouble in, in maintaining Delphi presence in the corporate environment, um, uh, one of the reasons, certainly, the, certainly the last few places I've worked, that's, uh, that's the issue. Um, I, I did also want to pop up there. I found this excellent article. Uh, it was a, it was a, a radio poster a couple of years ago um, uh, from <coughs> Anders, Anders Alsberg, who um, invented uh, our great wondrous tool. Uh, unfortunately, this, this projector is really terrible. I'm going to have to say that some of my presentation it's going to be really small and hard to read, so I'll, I'll try and explain more again. Anyway, this, um, this uh, article is about uh, where, uh, what uh, Anders has been doing since, he, you know, since the beginning and includes uh, about 10 minutes or so on Delphi, its origins, uh, Pascal and those kinds of things. It's quite a good article um, and uh, there's a link on my LinkedIn page, so uh, I, I could possibly send this link. Anyway, uh, I would have wanted to play it but we couldn't get it to work, so um, <coughs> we'll have to skip that off. Okay, now, let's get started on Project Bundling. We're going to run out of time, I know, so I'm going to try and get on. Um, project Bundling. What this is, so what is it? It's, a, it's an approach I use for creating and managing Delphi projects. Now, why do we need an approach for that? Why isn't it just inherent? And, and well, really, what we're getting is the elimination, and this is my big part, the big thing that I find most, uh, that I really felt I needed to do. Uh, just one qualifier as well. Um, I, I've only been working on this project bundling for literally I started the project about two months ago, but I've been thinking about it for a very long time. And uh, so I've got a little way to go yet. So I've got a tool at the end which we'll see, um, which does a lot of stuff, but it can do so much more, especially utilising some more of the Git features, which I'm hoping we're going to get to. But anyway, small digression. So let's come back. So everybody knows what component hell is, right? Silence. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so basically, the component hell is is the thing that stops you from uh, getting a new computer because uh, you never, never want to. I got my project that builds on that machine. I'm never touching it again. And uh, so, I've, I've, you know, I've had people. I actually used to have a uh, XP computer that sat in the corner with nothing else on it except one project that I needed to compile every now and then. Uh, it was just too painful to move. So I said, I've got to get away from that. So I um, took. Uh, this, this is where this has all come from. Um, basically, it frees a developer uh, from being attached to a particular installation. I can do work at home, different versions of Delphi, different versions of uh, uh, different uh, components, uh, all working together, whether I'm at home, work, doesn't matter what computer I'm on. That, that's what I was trying to get to. Um, it also gives you the advantage and maximises team collaboration. Now, in a uh, small development group, and maybe one, it doesn't, it doesn't help that much, except, of course, that if you're working, sometimes you have to uh, use your other computer because you're on the laptop or you're heading off somewhere or whatever, you want to do some work. So even though you don't think, oh, this doesn't apply to me, right? it's only me, it actually does because you're not always you. 
Sometimes you're you on the road, sometimes you're you at home, sometimes you're you at somebody else's business. So, so team doesn't necessarily mean multiple people, it means the way that you are having to work uh, in, the, in the way you are. So, um, we've got to use this an exceedingly powerful version control system, um, uh, which uh, again, uh, touched on this morning. Uh, he, had to, he said, you have to get your version control sorted out before you do the next bit. Fortunately, this is what I'm going to talk about, is trying to help you get your version control started off. So the first half hour um, is, is about um, just version control and how you can use it, because the project bundling <coughs> itself needs it. So if you're going to bundle this project, you need to use the distributed version control system, either Git or Mercurial, doesn't matter which one, um, but you need to have that. Uh, SVM just does not cut it for that. Uh, also, minimizes the Delphi version group. <coughs> When, I, when I've done this uh, presentation before, I actually have Delphi 7 and Berlin running at the same time in the same project. Um, and so you can do updates using Delphi 7 or updates using uh, Berlin. Obviously, there's a lot of limitations there. That's where you've got a Delphi 7 project, you're moving towards Berlin. You can do it in either way. Obviously, you can't go back the other way if you're using things like helper methods and um, uh, Parallel task library or whatever, you can't go backwards and use Delphi 7 and that, but you can always upgrade your project going forward. Okay, so uh, what do you need to use project bundling? It's nothing much, it's the things that you've already, you're already doing it, you're probably just not doing it all together in, in, a, in a concerted way. So, first thing is distributed version control tools, and that's so key, that's why the first half of this uh, discussion is, is about that. Um, you need uh, Delphi Cone. Oh no, one. Oh, I see. Oh, cone, I'm thinking. What's a Delphi Cone? Okay, one or more versions. <laughs> so, you get one or more, or 10 or 15 versions of Delphi, whatever you want. Um, the project bundling guidelines, which I'll give you in a second, and that's all you need. It's just the way to do it, and, uh, and that's pretty much all you need. So, the other thing that you could use is the, a bundling tool using these principles that I've outlined. The one I've got is open source, it's on Git, um, so you can contribute to that if you want, uh, but you might find that, you, you know, you find, oh, I just need it to be slightly different. So rolling your own might be better uh, in your situation, although mine is sort of focused on corporate type things, so there's like a <coughs> server folder and a client folder, and if we're all gonna move away to uh, rad uh, server, <laughs> we probably just have a Right, so the folder instead of the client. Instead of one. Okay. So the first one is, I, I have to apologise in advance here, we're, we're going to do a lot of distributed version control in a screen you can barely see, so please let me know if we're not getting anywhere. Okay, and I have to drop the microphone as well, so uh, I'll have to speak loudly. So, um, oh sorry, I got ahead of myself. <laughs> Talk about what I'm going to do about any version control first. Um, so firstly, uh, the differences between, uh, between a distributed version control system and a centralised one, which many people are, uh, are aware and, and uh, know that uh, the, the future forwards the, the, the other versions, the centralised one. However, um, most people are actually still using um, Git like it's a centralised one. So or quite often they, they are. So in a centralised system you've got, you must have a server uh, is usually installed on a local machine, and in a distributed one, um, it's still you still should have one. You still have to have a server, but you don't need to have one. And if you haven't got it at the time when you're trying to do your work, it doesn't matter. Okay, um, then in the centralized, we've got the master version is on the central server, and in DVS uh, distributed, you've got the master as part of every single copy. That's around, or every single clone is what the term is. Um, so typically, uh, SVN, uh, team coherence, TFS, a version or a branch is, is a problem thing which people try to avoid because it just makes extra folders all over the place. Um, in uh, distributed version control, there's only one folder and it magically changes. When you say give me that version, it, the folder changes, so there's only one. And actually, that, that point is the key one um, in terms of project bundling. So, in a few words, um, it really shines when you are decentralised. Um, so, you've got a server at home and a laptop on the road. 
SVN simply doesn't cut it there because you can't, you can't, uh, if you haven't got, you can't make local source changes unless you keep the repository. Or, you know, there's various ways around it, but that's essentially the difference we're talking. Okay, so um, there's a whole discussion board on uh, why is Git better than Subversion, and it's probably like uh, you know, any other flame war you've ever seen in your life. But anyway, that, it's actually got some good, uh, got some good discussion there which you might be interested in. And the counter arguments go mainly go to Git adds complexity. It's really complex, really hard to use. Yeah, anything that has uh, that has more features is harder to use, right? So if you've got a video playing with just a big play and stop button, yeah, it's great. But you know, can you record 15 moves at the same time? Things like that. Um, revisions don't have version numbers; they all scream. Uh, and yeah, well, no, they don't. <laughs> this is this is the version number. Uh, See, I'm still walking. That's the version number. So it's a little bit hard, a little bit hard to say. Oh, can I have uh, what version we are on? Uh, one F five O E F one B B. So generally, what they do in the display is actually just show you the first five characters. Some other tools um, show you the end five characters. So uh, that's your version numbers. And the reason is, does anybody know the reason? Why well, there's no counting number? Because there's no sequence. Yeah, there isn't any sequence. So, so somebody here, there, somebody over there remembering that this was developed for the Linux kernel. So well, it was anyway. So Material actually does have still have a number. I don't quite know how they do it. Maybe it's just a display thing. Um, uh, yeah, so where you say, oh, give me the next number, but I'm offline, you're not offline, what's the next number? You used to know. Uh, and the next thing is, it, you know, might have 15 people in the one millisecond since you looked up for the last number was that I wanted to commit. So then we have different numbers. So that's why they just say, no, good, just unique idea. Um, and using it properly is a paradigm shift. You've got to stop thinking branch folder, branch folder, branch folder. You've got to start thinking folder, make a branch folder, branch folder, branch folder, branch. And keep making branches, and when you're finished with it, put it back again. Um, and the other argument is, oh, you have to do everything in command line. No, that's the soul. I'm not doing that. Well, maybe two years ago that was true, but uh, simply isn't true anymore. So, uh, although I think Malcolm had it, uh, was it Malcolm yesterday, he said, oh, look, I, I tried to use the thing you're talking about, but I can't do it. So, uh, and he was using the command line instead. So, so command line isn't actually that bad. So I'm going to try to just show you uh, how to drive uh, Atlassian source tree, which is a uh, source, source control tool. It's a thing that helps you use source control, uh, and you can use Git or Mercurial, and it works exactly the same way, whether you depending on your type of, of, uh, of uh, repository. It doesn't care. So we'll, we'll try and get on with that, but I'm saying that the just be warned, the screen is really awful and we'll, we'll just try and have, it, uh, have to live with it. Okay. And, geez, it would have been good if I'd had it started, wouldn't it? Okay, just a couple of things about my environment here, just so you get an idea. This is, um, uh, I'm running a virtual machine, so Windows so 10 with the Windows 10 virtual machine. Uh, this virtual machine is a, um, is a network, uh, a domain um, client. So I normally, this is because it's focused towards um, you know, corporate environments, I actually run this as a, a domain. And try as I might, I tried really hard to get my server working this morning, but uh, I couldn't make it to uh, with the, with the uh, wireless. So anyway, so we're going to have a little bit of trouble chatting away to the server. Um, so uh, we'll have to see how we go. Okay, so this is source tree. Now, unfortunately, I can hardly read this, so I don't know how you're doing down the back there. Uh, pretty badly, I'd imagine. You can't see anything. Okay, yeah, it's going to be a trouble. Uh, what we have is, uh, so along the top here, and, and one more qualifier if I can. The, this uh, upgraded to version 2 only last week. So, uh, so my prep was all done with version 1.9, and version 2, which is completely different, uh, has a number of new release kind of uh, issues that I'm trying to deal with at the moment. So we've got the repositories along the top here, um, so you can open more, more than in a sec. Um, and down the side here we've got the status of that of that repository. So um, 
In here we have what's happened in the repository over time. This is obviously a very small one. Uh, it's actually the bundle thing that I was, the project, the Git project that I was talking about earlier. And, uh, and you can see it's, it's just me been working on it in the master branch, doing it very, very badly, um, not using my own, taking my own advice here. Uh, so this is the, the commits that I've done over time. You can see uh, more details about each thing, and then for each commit, you can actually see what I did, what was actually changed in each file, so you can see here that, that last commit I did on something which you won't be able to read because I can't even read it. Uh, the project bundles.paz file. Um, I took away this version info and I added this version info. So that was a, a constant that I changed there. So you can actually, you know, without even looking at the Delphi source, you can see, oh, he's changed that. Why did you change that? Okay. All right. So let's move on to the demonstration. Now, yesterday I was I was trying to be all retro, uh, but uh, I think that's a bad move. So uh, today I'm going to be non-retro. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create just a very basic project and just take you through all the steps and how to drive all of the scenarios or as many as we can fit in the, in the time we've got left uh, for so this just, section. You can just resize. No, we've tried to every single one. Make it smaller? Yeah, it's too big. Yeah, yeah, just grab the top line. It'll resize. You do it, man. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> okay, so hang on. I'm not quite sure. What, what's your problem? Let me come around over. You won't be able to see the scroll bar. Uh, yeah, no, no, I think we'll, we'll just go there. When it becomes a problem, we'll, uh, we'll think about it, okay? Right, so I'm going to create a new project. Uh, just make a uh, VCL. Uh, I hardly ever do this, you know. Uh, a VCL forms application. Okay. And so there's our, there's our form, and on that form we're, well, but we'll just say first that I'm going to make a new folder. Oh yeah, that's a good spot. I'm going to make a new folder in here. Now, uh, I said that we were going to talk about when you're acting in different roles. So, so what I'm going to say here is we're going to ADUG workstation. Um, so I'm, I'm saying I've, yeah, I've done this one on my workstation. So, form unit. And a pass and an a dog. Now I'm assuming everybody can see that okay ish. Um, okay, so we've, we've basically just made our project. Now, um, what we want to do next is say, okay, I'm going, I want to do version control on that project. So I'm going to click on, hopefully you can see this, it's not too bad in this particular place. But I'm clicking up here, which is which that says clone over there. I'm making a, a clone. Oh, sorry, I wasn't making a clone. I'm going to create a new repository, so we don't have any uh, anything else. It's a new repository. So I'm browsing to where where my uh, repository is. Actually, is that one? Ada workstation. So I'm going to say, yep, I'll have that folder. And what kind of repository am I using? I'm using. I could use Git or Material, but for later on purposes of uh, I actually use Git for another reason, so I'll pick Git in this case. So then I say create. Uh, one of the one of the things about um, this new release of of uh, Source Tree is that it's really really slow. Uh, it, it just takes much much longer than I. Oh, actually that wasn't too bad. I, well, I, well, I didn't really have a problem with that. Okay, so that's our repository, mate. That's all we need. We, we can actually now use this with Git. So if we wanted to do that, what, what can we find out? I'm going to click on the terminal button at the top here. Um, and again, we're talking about using git in the command line. You don't, certainly don't have to, but I'm doing it just for the posterity of the, of the thing. Um, so you can find out things about the uh, repository just by running git. And if you say git status, it will show me, um, oh, you've got these files that are untracked. You've got demo DVR, blah, 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 something called local, DFM, has. So those are in red, which you can't see at all. Okay. No. Right. So terrific. Uh, um, but we can, if we look in Source Tree, uh, we can see that Source Tree actually doesn't know anything about Git. All it knows is the commands that it has to issue to talk to Git as a repository. So it knows how to uh, issue the same commands I do at the command line. So it doesn't actually have inherently any understanding of Git, it just has an understanding of the commands required. 
So all, he, all the source tree has done is issued the same command I just did to get this list of untracked files. And it's, it's giving this nice little symbol to say, oh, these files are untracked. Um, I might just, uh, I have to you know, just run our project to get a few more files. Okay, our project is fantastic, does a lot of stuff. Okay, but now at least it would have uh, created some more things. And you see that um, all, all source trees is looking in the folder and going, oh, something's changed, something's changed. So, what we can see here, um, which you may not be able to see very well, is, sorry about that, but that's the way it is. Uh, this here is, it's showing, oh, you've got some folders, uh, uh, it's called Win32 Debug, and there's an exe in there. And the truth is that we don't want to track um, binary files in, in Git or Mercurial for that matter. If you're having constantly <laughs> changing large files in Git and Mercurial, it's very bad. If you have large files which you only put in there once every couple of years, that's perfectly fine. We're only worried about the changes, the number of changes that we have to make in binary files. So it's okay to have binary files in Git. It's, it's not okay to have constantly changing binary files of any size in Git. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to exclude those. So can we see, the, can you see that that says ignore there? So what I'm doing is I'm going to ignore, there's many options for ignore. All it does is really create a text file which says, I want, here are the rules for ignoring. So I'm saying that I want to ignore everything beneath the folder Win32 or Win32 debug. Since I don't want the DCUs either, I'm just going to say exclude everything under Win32 because I don't want really any of those artifacts that are created during the project. I certainly don't want to check them in every time I make a change. So I'm going to say ignore that, and then say, oh, well, all those are gone. The other thing we don't want is this .local file, um, because obviously that's a local file. We don't, we don't want to track that. So what we can say in this case is ignore all files with this extension. I hope you're going to, you know, even if you can't, I'm reading it out. Ignore all files with this extension, so anything .local is going to be ignored. And that gets removed from our list. So we've got a... Um, Project there. I'm pretty happy. I'm saying I've started this project, uh, and also the ignore file that I said. Oh, I don't want to track these kind of things. So I want to check in all of these things. So um, I'm ready to do that now. Um, so I can do that. I can click on the commit button. I can also. Well, I'll show you a bit later. You can also do it in some <coughs> as well. Uh, so if, uh, let's actually, let's just pop over and see how Delphi's doing with it. Um, so Delphi uh, Berlin onwards, I think, might even be in Seattle, has Git support built in. So if you go down to Git, and you say commit, uh, and from the project directory, um, you can see that um, initially Delphi doesn't show you anything. So, uh, which is a bit of a pity, but if you tick this box down the bottom and say, show me the untracked files, it'll show you, oh, it's, it's showing us the same kind of files that, um, that uh, source tree was showing us. So that what I'm trying to emphasize here is, it doesn't matter what tool you do your Git tracking with, you can do it a bit in Delphi, a bit in source tree, a bit in the command line, this doesn't matter at all, because all they're doing is just monitoring the folder. So let's, uh, let's say, okay, I'm going to, in source tree, click all of those. Uh, I, want to, I want to track all of those things, uh, even the res file, because I might have custom icons or custom uh, things in our resource files. I might have resource string files as well. So, um, and when I, can, when I make a commit, he, in, in SVN or whatever, there's, there's a one-stage commit. You say, okay, I'm going to commit, and it goes. In Mercurial, because you're expecting well, HG or HG is the other name from Mercurial because it's Mercury, HG is the symbol. Uh, and in Git, both of them exactly the same. You have a two stage commit. So you have a local commit and then you do a push to a remote repository if you want to do that. Um, so the, the first thing is I haven't actually, the term is staging, saying I, I know these are files, I'm not tracking them, but I, what I want to do is okay, Git, I want you to track these ones. That's not doing a commit, that's just saying, oh, I want to add it. So, um, in source tree, it sort of helps out by saying, oh, if you tick the box, that means add, and then you say commit, well, I'll do it then. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can actually do it another way too, but I, uh, in source tree, it sort of tries to be helpful and take that 
pain away from you. Um, it's, but it is actually an advantage. So, um, you know. so every time you commit, you have to have a message. And I'm saying I uh, created a new project. Okay, and I'm going to commit that. And now it says, okay, you've got nothing pending. Everything's good. And now it shows us we've got our first commit here, and it says, what did you do? And again, I'm sorry about the quality of the screen here, but it's saying, oh, you green plus, I added these files here. And what did, what did I actually add? These are the contents of the files which you can actually view. Uh, if it understands, if it thinks it's a text file, it can actually view it for you. So that's what I've done. Okay, so that's our first commit. Second thing we usually do in a uh, Git repository is we usually track things. Uh, we have a readme file of some kind. So what I normally use to write readme files is Visual Studio Code, uh, that, which is actually a really, really good uh, tool written in Node. So it comes from free from Microsoft. It's, uh, just get it, it's great. It uh, has all sorts of power, uh, all sorts of neat stuff. Really recommend it. Not as good for Delphi, of course, but it's good. It's good for some things. Um, so I'm just going to add the command line. Oh, one qualifier again. Um, you see, this This is a Unix-style um, bash shell that I'm using here. Uh, that's because that's the default behavior of Git when you do the install of the Git tools. Um, mainly because, again, it was written for by Linux kernel guys, and they do Linux. Thing is, I'm doing, I always do quite a lot in Linux, so I have no problem, and I just can't be bothered changing the setting. You can actually change it to the Windows one. Uh, if you use Mercurial, you will get a uh, normal Windows um, DOS prompt instead. So don't, don't be put off, it's just whatever, whatever you feel like uh, it is as a command line tool. So I'm going to start Visual Studio Code. And uh, if, you start, if you start Visual Studio Code with a dot, it says, in the folder I'm in, start here. Um, so again, it's showing us those same files again. What I want to do is I want to add a new file called readme.md. So it's a markdown file. And in that we can say adug symposium. And first uh, commit is uh, commit one. Well, commit, 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 commit one. And I'll just, I'll just do the preview on the side. Uh, add it. Okay, now, so here we are looking at uh, Visual Studio Code. It doesn't know anything about Delphi, doesn't know anything about Source Tree, but it does know about Git. So here's this symbol here on the side here. We click on that, it's actually showing me that I've got changes, readme.md, which is the change I just made, because I just made it Git. If I have a look back at the command line and I go status, uh, uh, sorry, git status. Oh, git status. Let's go. <laughs> status. Shows me the readme. If I go to source tree and go to the uncommitted changes or the working copy, it says, oh, you've got an uncommitted, untracked file called readme. And if, uh, you, you can see where I'm going here. If I uh, refresh inside of Delphi, it's saying, oh, you've got one untracked file readme. So none of them know about each other. The only thing they know about is Git, and that's what the tool is for. It's for tracking changes in, uh, in Git folders, in Git repository. So all of the tools work the same. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, commit the change in... So firstly I'm going to add the file, so it'll become changes status from untracked to tracked. So I'm going to say in... Uh, Visual Studio Code, I'm going to say uh, add, so it's now saying uh, I'm going to add this, I haven't committed it yet, I've just added to the repository so that it knows to track it, uh, and it doesn't matter what tool I look in, again if I do its status, it's saying oh you've got a new file, and now it's green instead of red, which you probably can't see, you can see the green, but maybe you can't see the red, and uh, again source tree will be just showing, now it's got a green plus. So all of them are just looking at the folder, not talking to each other, just Okay, so uh, I'm going to commit that change in source tree. Um, okay, so add it. Read. Okay, now commit that. 
Okay, all that sounds pretty good, but how does that help us with our collaboration and those kinds of things? So, um, again, I really wish it would just change back to the, to the, to the branch view after you commit, because it makes much more sense to me. We'll, we'll tell them about it. Um, again, we, this, the key, one of the key things is this arrow, this um, <coughs> graph thing on the side here. Yes, really awesome. Um, it, we can't see a lot in it there at the moment, but uh, it's one of the really good features, which if you could see the screen very well, you'd actually see that was pretty good. So, okay, once again, sorry about that. Okay, so now imagine that um, wearing, wearing my other hat. Now, yesterday I said this was going to be too corny, so I wasn't going to do it. But they said, no, no, we couldn't follow where you were following around. So whenever I'm in the, I'm going outside on my, with my laptop type of repository, I'm changing with who I am. I'm going to put that uh, wrong Linux hat on it, Fedora Linux hat. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, so, so being my, uh, my uh, outside person or my on the road laptop person, I'm going to want to work on the same code as I do at home. So I'm going to clone the repository that I started so I can work on it, assuming that I've got my other laptop. So that, we'll just fake that part a little bit. So uh, I'm going to clone the existing repository. Uh, yep, yeah, that one. Yes, I definitely want to clone that one. And I'm going to clone it to, uh, so we can keep tracking them, I don't get lost like I did yesterday. Uh, I'm going to clone it into another folder, saying I am close by. And all I'm doing there is saying, okay, I'm going to work on this code somewhere else, so I need a copy of what you've got. So we should just show all of the changes that we've already had, and we see we've got two commits there, one where we added the readme and one where we did the other thing. All right, so that's all great. So I'm, I'm out on the road, I'm doing my thing. I want to now, uh, remembering uh, what Malcolm said this morning, whenever you make a change, you normally have to have a development branch and a release branch and a staging branch and a whatever other branch. Whenever you make a change using distributed version control, the ideal way to go through it is to actually create a function branch or feature branch. I'm going to make a new thing, so I'm going to branch. Now, it doesn't cost anything for us to branch thing. All it does is makes an entry in the repo database, basically, of the database file saying, hey, uh, let's, let, let's go somewhere else. Let's treat this as a different pathway. And that's why this graph comes in handy, because you can say, oh, this is a different path I got to get here. So now that I'm in my laptop uh, version, I'm going to make a new branch. So this, again, you're probably going to have trouble seeing it, but there's an open round circle here as opposed to a closed one. So that's a solid one, that's a round one, that's the one I'm on. <coughs> and in that one, I'm going to just click on the branch button. I'm going to make a new branch called, um, well, I have to do some work, but the project doesn't do anything. Um, add buttons in the label. Label. You probably couldn't see I'd missed like that. Um, you can at this point, you know, it's a little bit hard to see, but I could actually make a branch at any point in the history. I could go back to the version that was on Delphi 3 and click on that and say, okay, branch here, because I want to make some new changes to the Delphi 3 one, but I don't want that to affect the, the Delphi 5, 7 Berlin. <coughs> so I'm going, okay, so I can still do work on that. So I'm going to create my branch. Yeah, down for time. <coughs> Yeah, it's close to the limit. Right here. Yeah. So I'm making a new branch. Now you can't really see a lot has changed, except of course it's got this add buttons and label branch here now. So again, the round dot is on the, or the open dot is on the, um, on this particular branch. And I haven't made any changes yet, so it's a little bit hard to see. So if I, uh, if I look at the correct screen, I'm back in my Delphi here, and in my form, I'm going to use the new feature. Um, add a control, I'm going to add a button to it, and make it a fairly big one, and I'm going to go to the caption of the button, and I'm going to say show version, and then I'm going to go down to the font, because we need a fairly decent font, uh, about, about 18 I think, 
should do. So that's pretty good. Then I'm going to add a new label, add control label. And on that label, the caption we want to say version colon, and again, you're going to have to make our font bigger. The font is bigger, so I think about 22, that should be pretty nice. Okay, so there is our changes that we made in our feature branch. So I'm going to save that. If I now look back at source tree again, source tree is saying um, nothing at all because I made it in the wrong branch. <laughs> I made the changes in the master branch, didn't I? Who kicked that up? <laughs> so I've got the word uncommitted changes. But well, that's okay, we can still work with this. So I haven't left home yet. I've got my, I've got my, uh, I have to take my hat off. So, sorry, sorry, nobody, nobody pulled me up on that, that was a bit slack. Um, but first thing we notice is we, we're showing some of that history thing, we do not want to have any history, so I have to ignore that. Ignore everything below history, yep. So that gets rid of those. Uh, now we've got changes in the DFM and changes in the paths file, so yes, we definitely want to track those. So I'm going to commit our changes, change everything, we say added buttons. And things. Now, the thing is, because uh, again I got confused, I should have <laughs> I should have made some greater distinction about changing over from one to the other. But I'm um, sorry I didn't. Um, in in this branch, we have in this uh, part of the branch, we didn't make the we didn't we haven't made any branches in in this copy of the repository. So imagine, on my workstation, I haven't made a branch. That was what I did that on my laptop. So I, so I don't know anything about that. But that's okay. So, um, so I'll actually have to show one of the features I'm going to show later, a little bit earlier, but that's okay. We can get that. So added buttons and label. And commit. <coughs> branch. And now I'm thinking, oh crap, now my laptop's out of date. So, if I now go back to here, I can see I've got this extra added buttons and label, but in this one here, I was going to do it, but I didn't manage to do it. So now this one's out of date, so, so on my laptop, I can say, well, has anything changed? Before I make any changes, has anybody else made any changes to this? So I'm going to pull the changes that might be in the repository, it might not be anything. Now, typically, um, you actually, uh, so I'm pulling them from the master branch, because there is only one branch. Uh, typically, before you make a change, you would all uh, you you'd do a pull first. And um, normally, this button is highlighted, but because we're doing it so quick, it doesn't have a time to refresh. So the pull button would actually have a number there saying, "Oh, there's three commits or two commits waiting, or something like that." But it just doesn't refresh quick enough in the small time we've got here. So now I am in this add buttons and label branch, but I can see master has already added. It already added it. So what I can do is I'm in this branch and why is that showing? Okay, now I'm confused, I've confused myself. So why is that? Okay, it's there. Oh, because I haven't made any changes to the branch yet. Um, it, 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 it's not complaining. So, so now I do actually have to make some changes to the branch. So what I will do is I will uh, close that version of Delphi. I'll get rid of that as well. And I'm pretty well finished with that. I just open a new copy of uh, Delphi to be the laptop version. Which is, I was doing this in Delphi 7 yesterday, so it's much quicker. Uh, okay, so now we want to open a project, but we're on our laptop here, so we actually want to open the laptop uh, version of the project. And when I open that, I actually do get the buttons, because my branch had, didn't have any commits there, it says, well, you haven't really made a branch yet, have you? you haven't done anything. So, so what I'll do is I'll just add the feature that we need to actually, when you click the button, it says, uh, Label one dot caption equals uh, version one. 
and because it's not a release branch, we're, release version, we're just going to call it version 0.1. Okay, so we run that, and now we click on a, something magical. Oh, that's really good. So, uh, so now we've made that change. And I'm still working as that. Now we've got a change here. We've got a change in the DFM, and we've got a change in the PAS file. And when I make that change, uh, when I commit those changes, we're happy with them. Uh, added actions button. And uh, you may not be able to tell the difference, but you see this push changes immediately too. It actually is highlighted, despite the fact you can't really see that very well there. Um, if I were to temporarily do that and uh, went to the commit page, it, it, it's grayed out. So it's even harder to see, basically, all we can say. Right, so we're on this side, I'm happy to do that, and then I'm going to say, well, not only that, I'm, I'm, I want to push it back to push it back so that when I get home, it, it's going to be there, the change I made. So good, I'm going to do that commit. And it says, yep, everything was good. Which, in this case, was particularly lucky because uh, when I was at home, I hadn't done anything else. If I'd made a change uh, at home and on the laptop at the same time, I wouldn't have been able to do that. It would have said, no, 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 something's not right. You can't push it into somebody else's folder. So, so in order that we don't run into that problem in the future, I could, either as laptop or as workstation, I want to do it as workstation, I um, can, can say, okay, now, we're working, we might get in trouble with each other, so let's make a repository so we can both share it, so we don't stand on each other's, you know, can cause trouble, right? So what, what we want to do is actually um, go in here and say, I'm going to make a new remote. I should have done it the other way around. Okay, repository settings. In, in my laptop version, it's got an origin saying, I got this from here. And this one has, I didn't get it from anywhere. But I can say that I, I actually now want to store it somewhere. So again, it's the, what we can do is go to the command line. Um, we can say, uh, again, watch the Linux stuff here. So I'm going to cd to z, colon, if I do z, colon, which is my server. I wouldn't normally use z, but because I'm having issues contacting anything that's not myself, um, uh, I'll. I'll do that, so I'll do to Z share. Um, no such file, shares. Okay. Yeah. And CD. Yeah. And CD Z shares. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll just use the Explore to make sure I get this right. I had problems with this yesterday as well, so I uh, didn't learn too many things. <laughs> so if I do explore. Okay, Z, I'm going to go to that folder, shared, oh yeah, shared repos, and I'm in here I'm going to make a new folder called uh, ADUG. That's going to be our folder. In here I can copy that. And say CD to there. Okay, if I do a do, okay, guys. Uh, need the slashes in the other direction? Uh, not quite yet. I don't okay. Think I'll do. Um, if I do that. Okay. That was that was my next statement. I was going in, in this. You actually have to put the uh, put the slashes the other way because it comes. From Origin. So if I do, uh, so what's that? <coughs> yeah, so it hasn't been. CD, instead of saying uh, C, uh, Z colon, I have to go Z colon forward slash. Uh, shared forward slash repose. Yes, now it's saying, that. thanks for that. Uh, and then if we do it during there, it's an ADOG folder, CD, ADOG. I could actually do it using um, 
source tree as well, but uh, I'm trying to show that you're not restricted to source tree, source tree just helps itself. So um, in, in this folder, so our present working directory is now ADA, and I'm going to say uh, git init, which is basically what we did before we said create a new repository, and all it did was issue this command, git init. But because we're not going to work in this folder, we're going to tell it that it is a bare folder. So, um, so we're going to say git init bare, saying nobody should have any working folders in here, uh, nobody should try and use it, it's just for storage. So now that I have done that, I can now say, let me get that pathway. I can now say back in source tree, I can say for this guy, I can say the repository settings are, I'm going to add a new default remote of that. And we don't need these other settings here at the moment because we don't have remote permissions or anything like that. And OK, and it says sure, that's fine. Uh, it's got nothing to put there because we haven't got anything to commit, but anyway, that's all right. And in this one, what we can do is we... Oh, sorry, I forgot to change hands. So now I'm on the laptop one as well, uh, and then on the laptop I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to remove the original origin because I don't want to push it to that, works, to that one anymore. Um, yes, I do want to remove the selected remote. I'm going to add a new one, the same one. Uh, sorry. Okay. Wow, it's getting warm in here. Okay. Okay, so what I can do now is just nothing's going to happen in that remote until I actually push something to it. And then it'll push everything because it'll say, what's the status of the remote? Oh, it's got nothing. Therefore, start at the very, very first commit and send everything that we've got up to it. So, uh, we shall do that. Uh, so, I just need to do a small change of some kind. So, all I'm going to do is I'm going to, in my project, which I am in the uh, development ADA workstation one there. Let's do it in the other one. Uh, good. One's, one's, one's uh, Rad Studio and one's Delphi, so that's cool. I should be able to tell the difference now. Uh, so that one's uh, laptop, yeah. So now I'm just going to add to the project that README file so I just don't have to look for it all the time. And add the README, and in here. And it's a pretty empty README file. And uh, in in the Visual Studio, you type stuff in, but did you actually say it? Yeah, probably didn't. Okay, but that's alright. We can do that. Okay, let's do it. Okay. Uh, and, uh, so I'm saving that file. It is tracking it, and it tracked that I didn't save it, but uh, but the, it didn't. Uh, all right, so now we've got that one there. Let's add that README. Uh, do the commit on that and say added README, added content. And I can push those changes. And when I do that, the folder that we created before, we go, and we go, now, has stuff in it. Actually, it had stuff in it before, but anyway. So that's now committed. And if I now go taking off that hat and putting on my workstation hat again, I can see why people uh, had trouble following which folder I was in, because it, because it, this tab just does not give you any clue where you are. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, anyway, so now. What I could do now is I could pull the information from the repository, but again, what I wanted to show you is that um, we, we might, uh, on occasions, get some kind of conflict um, when, we're, when we're working uh, two different ways. I can't, I can't remember whether I did that or some other person has made a change at the same time you did. So we might find that if we went to that readme file again, 
I'm going to add it to the project, which I, the other guy did on the other path, but, you know, whatever. And the fun, on this branch, remember we haven't made any, it's a different copy of the repository, so we're, uh, we've got a, we still don't have any changes in it. Um, a dubs symposium. And I remember the commit one, one was some kind of uh, project, uh, added project or something like that. That's what I remember. I typed uh, commit two was uh, added labels. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Saved it this time. Uh, I can go to source tree as the person without a hat. And then I can say, okay, I've got unsaved committed changes on the readme file. I could try and do a pull now. If I try to do that, I hope what will happen is it'll say, hey, no, 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 we've got a problem. You haven't committed your changes. <coughs> and you might have a contact. You might have a conflict. Um, just had to change hats again, I'm sorry. Okay, so I, when I did that push before, I only pushed one branch. <laughs> I didn't push all the branches. So, Again, this is the thing where people are saying, oh, it's much more complex. Yes, it is, but it also has a lot more features. So that, would have been, that could have been good that I didn't push the other one. Um, but anyway, so let us, uh, let us now go to push. And I'm going to push the master branch as well. Okay, Roddy right Hutchinian, now I'm back on my workstation again. That sort of does help that. And then if I say pull, I think it should complain now when I ask for the, ask for the branches. Uh, pull the master branch, it, that should be okay. Yep. And if I pull the other branch, that's probably going to be okay as well, actually. So. Oh, okay, good. No, it's saying, uh, no, I can't, I can't pull that one because the readme that you've got that's untracked is, um, oh, sorry, you just can't see that at all, can you? So, okay, so the readme you've got locally isn't, uh, isn't committed yet, so I can't do what you ask. So it does warn you, you, you pretty much can't go wrong, really. Uh, so what I need to do is commit my change on this side. Uh, add a readme. I can push immediately saying oh, I'll just push my changes and it says that's okay. <coughs> on this side, now what I can do is sorry, going back to the last person again. This is really, this is really uh, not exactly how I wanted to demonstrate the, the, the thing, but anyway. So what I've basically done is, okay, I've finished my feature now in the, in the laptop side, so I need to change back to the master, master side. Uh, master, sorry, the master branch. Uh, now where was that? I need to go back to here. Or I can do it from the other one. That's probably easy. Right here. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm starting to confuse myself now. It's probably late in the afternoon. That's, that's the problem. Okay, so I've done all those commits. That's, I've pushed everything. Got no, nothing waiting on the side. Okay, on this side, I can now say I'm in master and I want to merge. I'm going to merge the changes that I did on my laptop. So I'm clicking that merge and then I'm going to say create a new commit even if it's fast forward as possible. Now what a fast forward is, is if you've got, if you've got a, uh, a branch and nothing happens in the master branch while you're doing it, and then you put it back again, it'll just say, no, no that's, you didn't do anything. That's basically you made it in the main branch. If you don't, if you do want to, um, if you want to track that you actually did make another branch, then you can tick that box and say, uh, make a commit even if it is a, uh, even as far forwarding as possible. So I'm going to say OK to that. And we're, I can tell everyone is just about dead now, so I'm going to, I'm going to uh, 
Uh, we're going to finish that pretty uh, soon. And it's given us that warning that we expected because I made a change in this one and I made a change in the same files in that one, saying, hey, uh, something, something's not right. So the merging, it said, oh, okay, I've merged it. I took your feature branch on the side here, which is graph. <coughs> it's not too bad. You can see I, I did this and this and this, and then I went out here and made this change and then put it back again. But it's saying, okay, but something's not right. We need to fix that. And we say, okay, and if we go to the uncommitted changes, it's got these ones with the exclamation mark in it. <laughs> Move, just as, I, just as I did that. So what we have to do is resolve the conflict. So um, it's saying, this one here, this readme that you had, you'll notice that the change in the form, because we added the readme to the form on both sides, that was the same. So it says, yeah, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. So it did it for us. So if you make the same change on both sides, it just doesn't bother you with it. The only one it's complaining about is, no, you've got some lines that are different on this one and that one. So, so we need to resolve those. So in source tree, you can right click and say, resolve conflicts. You can resolve it by just saying, no, no, just take that guys. Or you can say, no, just take that guys, whatever way you want to do it. Or you can use an external um, merge tool and there's a hundred different ones that give you all sorts of options which you can use. Um, I actually use uh, the Beyond Compare one. So the Beyond Compare one gives us this view of this is, this is what the history of it was, nothing. Uh, this is what next guy over here said. This is what this guy over here says. Well, you fix it, I can't work out what's going on. So, so what, we can, what we could do is we could say, oh yeah, I like that line from that guy, so I could pick that, uh, I'll just pick everything from the blue side, or I can pick everything from the pink side, which you can see, click these buttons here, there are, that's a pink one saying, that's that guy, and there's a blue one saying, it's this guy, and if I clicked either one of those, it would say, oh yeah, okay, I'll accept whatever you say. And so I'm actually going to do that and resolve the conflict, and say, yes, that's good, I'm happy with that. When I close that, it comes back to source tree, source tree says, oh, yep, that's good, I'm all sorted now. Um, Leaves behind these are ridge dot ridge files, which I don't really like that much, but anyway, so now we're happy and we can commit that change. And it already gives us the nice message saying, Oh, look, we resolved this conflict. It, it, you can't see it very well, I'm sorry. But anyway, we resolved this conflict by joining that together, and that's that's what happens. So commit, and then everything is all sweet. So after all that, we actually had two people working on the same source code doing all sorts of different things at the same time. We got it back together, we put it all, we put it all back into one sensible working um, thing. So now <coughs> when we go back to the master branch, we can see the history of everything that happened. Uh, we saw that it happened over here, then there was a merge, and now we're at this uncommitted state, having a un this original file, which I don't want, so I can remove, I can remove um, files that aren't tracked, and I can um, discard changes in ones that are tracked. So I'm, because this is a not a track file, I can just remove it, saying that we're all good. Okay, so I, I realised that was a whole lot of stuff and I, I got off track of my own plan there a bit, but I, I hope you see that the, the power is really um, that you can pretty much uh, track everything. That's just tracking and merging everything and that's really great. The other thing that is also quite quite important is that I am now in back in uh, which one am I in? Uh, yes, I'm going to reload. Yes, yes, I'm going to reload. And I can. Oh, that's the readme, and it's the readme in the workstation machine. Okay, and importantly, that that's got all the changes in it now, and it's showing version the new version, but. At any point, I can go back to source tree and I can say, nah, put it back to how it was back here. And I say, okay. So now, <coughs> I go back to Delphi. Now, which one would I have open? Uh, was this the other one? Yes. <laughs> pretty sure that's the other one. Yeah, so I'll close that one. Uh, I'll just go back to Delphi and it says, oh, you've made a change. I'll say yes, yes. So now if I run it, it's back to how it was before. It doesn't do anything. I could then say, 
uh, in source tree, I can say, well, go back even further. Go back to here. And say, okay, oh, it's complaining that, oh, there seems to be something um, something that was different, and I just want to discard that. So I said before, we can discard those changes. So we will. We'll just discard the changes and then put it back to how it was back here. So now when I open, uh, go back to Delphi, it's going, oh, you've changed something again. So yes. And now when I run it, it's back to how it was before. Uh, when we first created the project. So I can, at any point, go to any version, and not, not only that, I can go to the one that's in the feature branch as well. So I could go to that interim stage, and say, oh, show me what it was like um, here. <coughs> say, okay. So that was done in that other feature branch, but this is in my repo, it's in my repo folder. So I can see any of them, so I can see exactly how it was. And again, if we go back to Delphi, uh, reload, yes, yes, yes. And that is the stage where um, where it had something, but it didn't hadn't committed the readme the re and fix up the readme file. So if you had a look at the readme file, uh, it was nothing. In it. Okay, so I know that was uh, pretty hard after lunch. I can see a lot of people uh, nodding. So we, we've got uh, any. I know there's lots of questions yet. Yeah. Um, if you're working on one machine, what yep. if there's two machines, you have to resync or do you have yep. a manual task or and does it? Resync from everywhere. Or yeah, so I, I thought I actually did that step, but yeah, yeah. So the point is, and probably because I was doing that kind of thing. Um, so every time you make a change, if you push it to the repository, so remember we made that shared one that might be available. available. Might not be available, but it, and it won't be available. Say if I took my laptop on the road for two months, mm. but then I remote it into my machine at home a few times over the time, make changes there. So I had some changes on my laptop, some changes on my server, and in the meantime, I got somebody else to help me work on it, and they checked out stuff and put it on their server. And when I get back on my laptop, it's got some of the changes I did, none of the changes that have happened on the server, none of the changes that other person who doesn't even know exists. When I bring it in, all I do is pull. Sorry, All I do is do this pull, P U P U W up. So, okay. so assuming that everybody else has been pushed to that central folder. Oh, okay. So you don't you don't pull you don't push or pull from each. You do you pull from pull from everything and so so the, the normal process is make a change. When you happen to make a commit, do a pull, pull from wherever the thing is, and that might be Bitbucket or um, a shared folder, or it might be Git, or it might be any, any, anywhere in the world, yeah, if you can access it with a, whatever. It doesn't matter, but before you do a commit, always do a pull. And that will bring the changes. And because if you're working in your feature branch, changes that other people's features branch, they, they won't affect where you are, you'll be able to see what they're doing, and you might even be able to say, hey, that was a neat thing, I'm going to grab that, because I need that now. So what I could do, is I could say, Go to this one here, make a new branch, and then take something, I'll just, I won't actually do it, but I can say, go to this point in time, make a new branch, then go and get the feature from here, and then merge that into my new branch. So you can actually do a thing called cherry picking. In Git it's called cherry picking. In, um, in Mercurial it is called, who knows the answer? Mercurial? Grafting. Grafting is right, that's right. So cherry picking, so you can take a little bit. So what we did was a full merge. It says, everything in this folder, what is different to everything in this folder? That's what a merge is. And it says, okay, I found this is the same, uh, that's a change, but oh, that person made the same change, so that's nothing. But uh, blah, and mix it all up again. But no, hang on, these two things aren't right. So that was the last bit we did. We resolved those conflicts by saying, <coughs> this person and this person made the same, ch made changes to the same thing on the same line, so clearly we've got some kind of conflict and say, hey, well, I've done the merge, but I don't know which one you want. Which one do you want? And then we then we're able to say, oh yeah, I want that one from there, and I want that one from there, and that bit from there. Right now I'm happy. So, so, so you could say, just get the whole thing, get his whole thing. So, so it doesn't do it visually. You know, you know, you know, so if you do a start a new branch, start a new branch, yep. do a new branch. Do a pull before you do a branch, yeah? Yeah, because that way you've got all the latest features of everything. <coughs> if you do happen to miss one, though, if you do happen to miss one, but say I'm in this branch here, down here, and I wanted something out of here, you can just click on it and say, cherry pick. Yeah. 
So if I say here, um, uh, I can go down and say cherry pick, and it's like, are you sure you want to cherry pick from here? And it will say, the changes that were on this line, that's the difference between cherry picking and merging, the changes that happened on this commit, I can bring and put over here. Do you want me to do that? It doesn't do a whole, whole brand, you know, what's different between this whole thing and this whole thing. It just says, oh, you want this change? I can bring it in if you want. And then you say, yes, I, yes or no. So this little bit of visual. Of course it doesn't visual. Oh, well, you, you don't have, mostly, you don't have to. Yeah, you were asleep during that part of the presentation, yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 so we did the merge conflict with Beyond Compare, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so you can visually do it, and it doesn't care what tool you use. So, um, if just just on that last bit, um, if we go to tools options, which hopefully I can see here in Source Street, um, under diff, you see there's perhaps you can see that there's the what what external diff tool do you want to use? Because everybody's got an opinion about this. So, um, so it's got all of these listed here, and you can add other ones anyway. So, yeah. That's what I actually demonstrated while you were asleep. So. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, there's KDIF, uh, diff merge, beyond compare, win merge also. Uh, win merge is pretty good, I actually have used that. But beyond compare is way better, and you actually get the light version in Delphi for free anyway. So. Okay, so we really need to move on to the next bit. So, that whole thing that I talked about, um, remembering Malcolm said, get your version control sorted out. That's what I've tried to introduce. Uh, you, you need this distributed version control for project bundling to work. So now I can actually talk about the thing that I wanted to talk about, which is project bundling. But I really needed you to be fully aware that you can't just use it with SDM, although you probably could, and I think it would be harder. It would be a lot harder. Right, yeah. so we'll move on with the next part of the presentation. If anyone just wants to, you don't want to do a stand up and sit down, because I can tell it is so warm in here, and the lunch and everything. So, uh, maybe we should. Everybody will stand up. Stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Star jumps. Uh, three, yeah. How about three star jumps? Three star jumps. And that's it, again. Freaking awesome, I reckon. It is truly the best part of Delphi. Unfortunately, it's also the worst part of Delphi as well, uh, because we have all sorts of um, problems. So we've got. It's great for the first time you use it. You can pack it, you whack it in, and everything. The pony, you drop it on, you start work. It's fantastic. Until you have to give your project that you've just worked on, and then you commit it, commit it to your source control, and then the next developer comes in first thing in the morning and clicks on it. And he gets this. Because he said, well, you've added all this crap, I haven't got that. What, what, what in the hell is this? He's going to run over and thump you, or she, or they, or yourself. You're saying, oh crap, I'm, I'm on the train, you've got no way of getting that component. And you say, well, I can't do any work. You know, you know, I'll read my book instead. So, causes that kind of trouble. So, as soon as you commit it to the repository, it's in the code. So the next person who opens it, does a pull, they're bugger. Unless you've actually included the components in the project 
that you in your source control, which is actually the point of this discussion. So how do we get how do we do that? That's the other message you get at the end of that. Um, the other thing is the way you use uh, packages, it generally stops you from using more than one version of the same component at the same time. Now there's tricks and you know some vendors, component vendors have done it, so it's a nice trick you can actually use two versions. Uh, others they just like yeah or, or you know, don't worry about it, and then you say, oh, now you have to use version 2 now. But that makes it difficult. Um, you can't, say, say you're working on two parts of the system at the same time, and this part needs version 1, and this part needs version 2. Maybe there's you know, a new, uh, some incompatible feature in version 2, you can't use it. And you can't have them both at the same time, generally. We solve that problem too. Um, this is the kind of area you get. You go, oh, I can't do version 1 because it's already loaded. Version 2 is already loaded and you want to do the other way around. Um, then you have package independency. So say you've got um, some reporting tool which uses some other graphing tool and then you go, oh, no, I don't want the graphing tool anymore. You take it out and it says, uh, oh, hang on, what did I say? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, first bit. Yeah, first bit is, uh, I, I took out I want to get rid of this package, I don't want to use it anymore. But it says, no, no, you can't. It's used by something else. So you can't take that. The other one is, um, you're trying to put a new package in, and it's used the same unit or same control that another package has used. So you've got a package there, a package there, and some other package that they both use. And when you try and install the second one, it says, no, you can't, because, because um, it, it's already got, it already contains a unit called this, which, you, which is already in this other package. Now, generally, Delphi helps you a fair bit with that, and it says, do you want to try and fix this for you? And, uh, and generally, it does a pretty good job, but sometimes it just doesn't, especially if somebody has tried to fix it themselves manually, which I used to try to do, <laughs> but it didn't work very well. Um, yeah, so this is the other thing I was saying. When you upgrade a component, it makes it really hard to support the earlier versions that even maybe you've even released them. And then you have, you're working on the new version, and you say, oh, I have to get the new version of the component. And then the customer rings up and says, hey, uh, I need a fix on my old one. And then you say, okay, no worries. You open up that package and it goes, oh. It says, oh, what? I don't understand. So you've got the source code you've got out in the world, out of the wild. But you're doing development on the new version. And you've got the new version of the component in it. And then you go back to the old version so you can do a fix with your client. And it's going, um, what? I don't understand property two. What the hell is this? Because your component you've got loaded is version 2, the one that's expecting is version 1, and it doesn't understand some of the problems. Mm. So, we're trying to solve that problem as well. Now, the, the new get it package manage, uh, package installer uh, is pretty cool, pretty awesome. It's got some neat things in it, so you can, it's sort of like a, uh, sort of like the Delphi store app type of thing. Uh, but it doesn't really help us in this situation because what it really does is just compounds the problem by trying to install more stuff. Uh, it does a good job of taking away stuff too, but um, and I, I actually run into the problem where I tried to take away something that I made a dependency on and that caused more trouble. So it didn't really cope very well with that either. So um, this is not really, this is a good thing, but it's not really, um, it doesn't really help us in this situation. Okay, so um, more issues. Now, again, because I come from the corporate world, I, I keep coming back to this. I think one of the reasons uh, <coughs> we have trouble in the corporate world making sure they're persisting with the Delphi, um, keeping Delphi in the corporate world, is because the component installation hampers productivity and mobility. So, the example that I, which I, I think I've got an expert here. Um, if you get a new developer who hits the deck in a corporate environment where some place I worked at recently had 56 <coughs> components within the project, 56 component sets installed, um, it, it's a massive thing around the whole finance of a major international corporation. So, so it's a big project. Um, and uh, it, it takes weeks, it can take weeks to get all those components working together on a single install of a machine. Which is the thing I was talking about before. You just leave the machine, you've got it right, just leave it in the corner, don't touch it. Because you might want to build. 
So, uh, ten, thanks. He says sixteen or more. Uh, okay, so um, so getting a, just getting a new computer. So you're in a corporate environment, and they say, "Oh, here's a new laptop for you." You say, "Yes, I don't want that. I don't have two weeks to spare to put all those components back on." Uh, and the other one is uh, the other thing is that I'm a consultant. When I come and work for a company like that, I s you sit down and say, "Okay, I'm spending the next two weeks wasting the company's money." Because what you could have done is had a way that when the developer hits the deck, everything's all up to work, they just start using Delphi. That's what you want. You don't want to be spending months, uh, weeks, or whatever, um, just, just to get a new uh, developer up and running. Uh, which, which a lot of the other systems have a better way of dealing with that than the out of box, do whatever you want, which is the thing you do. That is actually one of the problems with Delphi, is that. It's not that it, you can't do it, it's, you know, you can't do it that way, you can't do it, you can do it whatever way you like. And the problem, that presents its own problems, is because you do it a different way to them, they do it a different way to you, you've never seen it before. Whereas other things, Visual Studio in particular, has guidelines that says, when you're doing this, you should follow this pattern, da 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 da, -da. And, um, and one of the things is making sure that the solution, the solution, which is the same as a group or a BPG in Delphi, the solution contains everything it needs to build the project. So that way, when somebody checks something out with Visual Studio, they're expecting, although still not perfect, in fact, far from perfect, but a lot better than just having things scattered all over the place. Um, that's, that's why it's more productive. So the, the accountants at, uh, at big companies just see dollar, 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 this is what it cost me to have Delphi, this is what it cost me to have C sharp, I'll just take C sharp, you know, I'm wasting five days or two weeks. <coughs> Why would I spend this kind of money? So it's not a productive tool, they say. Yeah, it can it can cause trouble. That's what I'm that's what we're trying to solve here. So using installers also in a corporate environment, don't have admin permission. You can't install anything because they, you're not the thing. And because it's also Delphi's in a um, all the settings in Delphi are in the user. So when you get logged in as administrator and you install a whole lot of stuff, it doesn't even go in your it doesn't even go in your repo. It, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't go in your registry. So even if you install a component, get the administrator to install a component, it's not in your user. Okay. So what are the I remember way back in the beginning of this discussion, I said um, what are the rules for project bundling? So, pretty simple. There's not that many, many, and you're probably doing them already. The repository should hold everything you need to build the project. And that is everything. I think um, Mal said exactly the same thing um, this morning. Is you have to have everything in there to build the project. And he included also the, the continuous integration stuff, the continuous um, delivery. The next one is, you don't use the library path in Delphi for anything else except Delphi stuff. No uproar? No uproar? I'm expecting uproar. Uh, yeah, if you make all of the things, all your pathways part of the project, then you don't need to have anything in your library, and that way when somebody gets a clean install of Delphi, they just whack it on the machine. Put your project in it, everything related to the project's inside the project, and then it just starts up. Don't have to go searching all over the disk or whatever for the for whatever's there. It's in the folders already. The other one is don't ever, and I mean ever, 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 ever use static <laughs> file paths in your project. Because when you check it out, you saw that I made another folder. When, when I was on my laptop, I put it in a different folder with a different name. So, if you've got a static path that says C colon backslash blah 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 blah, it's not going to be there, is it? So you never use static paths. You always use relative paths, which is what Delphi does by default in the DPR. Um, and the other thing, you must include the components in your repository, but limit to only what is required. So, by that, what is the minimum thing you need to work on 
a uh, work on a project that has a particular component set in it? Does anybody know what that is? What you actually have to have? What do you have to have to make it work? Not, not it make it the most beautiful experience you've got, but make it work. Source. You don't need the source. The, well, the binary, binaries, the uh, DCUs, DFMs, um, res files. That's it. That's, um, that, that is all of them that you need. Now, mostly you can get away with just the BPL and the DCU that's built. The other reason why you want to have just one DCU, so when I build the DCU, how do I know what other engine dependencies there are? So when I build it, it might actually call reference five other things, and then when Jim over here or whoever else compiles it, how do we know we get the same DCU? How do we know the program behaves the same? You don't. You, you, you don't. But ideally, you'd have all the project right. But so what you what? Probably the best approach, although it's debatable and there's variation there, it depends on the project sometimes, but you want just the BPL, the DCUs, and if they need it, the res files of the DFMs, if they're needed, and you only need DFMs if you actually got a visual form. Um, and the res files, where well, you need them if they're included, is if the, the PAS file references them. So if you reference the res file, then you're going to need it. So those are the three, three things. So um, we're running. Yeah, we've run out of time. Um, Scott. Uh, no, actually, go to completion. But I mean, that's why it's built together. Oh well, I can do the pack down version, obviously. Um, so do not install packages in your IDE. And again, you're saying what? <laughs> you're nuts. You're completely nuts. Don't install packages in your IDE. IDE. Um, have the pack, the project install them in there for you. And you, I can see total disbelief there because I yeah, had the same reaction yesterday. Unfortunately, I didn't get time to finish all the way through either. I know, <coughs> I've, I've got one I baked earlier. Um, and the golden rule of project bundling is this. If you can't clone and compile on a completely, completely clean install of Delphi, so a brand new machine, install Delphi, that's it. You clone it, and it should compile. That's when you know you've got a proper project bundle. And you also can't do it. Who thinks you can't do it? Okay. You've got the source code. You don't have the source code. Otherwise, it's very true. You don't have it. Yeah, yeah. But you're right. That, that's, you, do, you do have to have these things. Okay. What helps us with that? Um, I think I might have to uh, just run through these quickly. The key to project bundling, how to make all this work, I mean, it's a lofty goal, it's, it's no small thing. I've been working on this for years uh, in my head. I actually started work about two, uh, as I said, about two months on the actual thing to make this work. Um, but environment variables are, are really key. And the beauty is uh, that, uh, sorry, no. yeah. Environment variables is actually how everybody actually does it, even if you don't not aware. Um, so uh, the dproj file, file is actually not a Embarcadero thing. The dproj is called dproj, but in fact it's an MS build file. Um, so when we when we compile things with, uh, I actually don't know when it started, sometime in, in BDS when BDS came out, uh, we started using MS build to build Delphi projects. So uh, that, that dproj file is actually an MS build file with dproj on it. And that pretty much uses environment variables uh, exclusively to drive that. Um, fortunately, I, I don't know if this is by design or we're <laughs> just lucky, uh, uh, environment variables are supported the same way in MS build and Delphi BDS all the way back to as far as I have been able to check and I've got Delphi 4 all the way back. And it's handled the same. Um, the other thing that helps us is the, the project and build profile. So the profiles that you get, so you can say you make the debug build or whatever, that helps us. Um, and the, we saw that the get an HG support is built in inside Delphi, but we don't really need it if you're using Delphi 7 or BDS 4 or XE 3 or whatever. Um, it, it's not built in there, but that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You can still use Git because we saw how source tree just doesn't care. 
Um, the package definitions are... Um, uh, the actual package definition is actually stored in the registry. So if I just quickly skip over to that, and, oh yeah, now we'll log back on again. Pause. Oh, it's still hot. Okay, so all of the components that are installed in Delphi are actually stored in the registry, in the current user, which is absolutely wondrous because uh, if you're in a corporate environment, you can change these. Um, so in the, in the registry under the version of Delphi that we're talking about, so in Delphi version 7, it's called Known Packages. And in there is the pathway to the BBL file. Okay, that is, I'm, I'm toasting to death here, to be completely honest. I don't know if I'm going to make it. Uh, in later versions, in Code Gear, uh, BDS, version 6 and 7, it's, the versioning thing is really complex, and I have a guide for that. So if we have a look at that, it's exactly the same place, known packages. Exactly the same format, everything is exactly the same all the way through back as far as I can tell, which is Delphi 4. So it's done the way, uh, done the same. The versioning gives us trouble though. So um, because we've got 7 there and we've got in here, we've also got 7. So that is the product version, which is the same for Delphi 7 and is also the same for Code Gear 7, which I'm pretty sure is. 2009, or it might be 2010, I can't remember, but I don't. So, so uh, in order to solve this, I actually created a thing called Project Bundles. So let's just, I'm going to quickly go to that. Um, so if I say close everything. Um, create a new project. Uh, again, this is open source. There's a project bundle folder here. Oh. Is that good? Sure. Okay. Um, now, it, it, this is probably the crappiest way you've ever seen a, uh, a project template created in uh, the way it works. I, I make some apologies that, it, that it's so... Uh, it isn't quite as beautiful as I'd hoped, but again, I've only been working on it a little while. We can work on it over the, as time goes on. So, we'll have a bundle here. And uh, so we're going to create a folder called bundle, and in there what that does is creates this thing called check bundle. And all you basically have to do is just run that once. So you just run it in the debugger and it says, okay, great. Then forget about the bu check bundle part and then you say, okay, now I'm going to create my project. So this is why I was saying, sorry, it's, it's sort of um, <laughs> not quite how we'd hoped uh, uh, how it will be. Okay, so, so I'm going to now um, create the actual project I want to Create. So I'm going to add a new project, uh, VCL Forms application, and then I'm going to save that uh, into my bundle. And you see it's created these folders for us. So the project bundle thing is in, I've made a bin folder, a client folder. Again, this is sort of corporate so we've got a server folder and a client folder, but you might want to make just, well, you might have more complex or less complex, depending on what your needs are. And this is the client application, so I'm going to save it in here. So I'm going to save Form uh, and uh, client, and then my project. This is the. Uh, you've got to be really careful when you do this to, to get the pathways right because the project files and whatever they don't the folders necessarily the right way around. So be careful where you put it. Client, um, and this is uh, a, a Doug client. Okay, now we're going to save the project group and we're just going to call that ADOG. Okay, project group. Right, oh, good. Okay, so that's our bundle. Now, I said before that the important thing is the environment variables and because um, the simplest way to do that, there are more complex ways and in fact I've got a whole list of ways. Um, if we have a look in uh, tools, options, environment variables all the way back uh, have 
have been in Delphine, they're the same. You can actually see that I've actually done this in the past, and that might cause some trouble here. So, uh, Delphi project, it, these, invariable, these uh, environment variables I'm using to help me work with the bundle. Now, it, that's actually a remnant from a previous, a previous one. So, um, so the, the simplest thing to make sure you've got your, your relevant ones is you close that up. Oh, I think it's time. Okay, so now we, I've closed, the reason I'm closing it up is I want to actually run a batch script to set up all my variables. Again, I, it's not a thing of beauty yet. Uh, we should, uh, uh, you know, in, in, as time goes on, uh, that will no doubt make it more beautiful, but it certainly works at the moment. Um, if I go into uh, the Studio Projects Bundle, we have this start project batch file. Now if I open that, it hasn't got a lot in it. All it says is, oh, what Delphi version are you running? Uh, are you going to work in this project with? If for some reason you've got a compatible version of Delphi, I mean by the runtime libraries are the same, um, you can actually you can override that by saying, oh, um, normally I use Delphi uh, uh, 10.1 here uh, for the project, but I've got 10.2. The big deal is that everything that are compatible, so I'm going to say, in this case, I'm going to say, oh, I'm going to use 25. Now, where are these numbers coming from? That's, that's your next question. I'll come to that in a sec. But basically, all we're doing is defining the thing, and it does everything right up to the point, except for this thing here, which says, what is the name of the project group that you actually want to use? So we just call that ADAG in here. We'll just make sure. So our dproj file is called, sorry, our uh, group file is called uh, adub group proj, yeah, so we just call it adub, uh, that's all we want to call it, because it'll add that uh, on the end. Okay. So if we now save that and run from the command line here, nice uh, If we say start project, gives us all our environment variables and messages and other things if there's a problem. And it says, uh, the thing check bundle has been removed. Well, that's okay, we're only using a 10 initialize, so that's fine. I would have, you could, you can remove it or you can just let it take it away. And there we are with our bundle all ready to go, uh, all set up. Now, we want to say add a component to this. Normally we'd go, component, install component, blah, blah, blah. Don't do that. Okay, with bundling, once you've done it right, oh, sorry, I wasn't talking about the version. So have a look at this, versions, Delphi versions. Uh, Delphi tells you the Delphi version when you go to help, that one there, which is not the same as the product version. So I was looking for a way to be sure I know exactly which Delphi version I'm using so that the bundling will work properly. So, so it always tells you in the help. That's version 24. So that's why I'm not saying version 18, which is the BDS uh, version. So if we just have a few tools, uh, options to variables. Uh, environment functions, environment variables. We now have our ones that we set up in, uh, can you see that all right? We have these environment variables we set up in our batch file. We can use the dproj ms build file to, for doing that as well. But importantly, if you have a look down further, um, Delphi, uh, you'll see this thing called uh, product version. That's the one that Delphi puts in. And the product version relates to the version of the product. Because we've had a couple of products over the years, we had Delphi and then we had Code Gear and then we had um, <coughs> this product version doesn't relate to the Delphi version. Um, and, and that's good so, uh, because it actually helps us make sure that we're, we're following along with the, in the right kind of pathway. So, let me just uh, see how we're going for time. We have to stop soon. Uh, five minutes more and we're going to come. Okay, right here. Yeah. Um, so, if I look at, I've got this Excel spreadsheet that helps explain it uh, pretty well. Did I actually change back to there? Yes, I did. Okay. Excellent. 
Okay, very brief, if we can, Delphi version history thing. Okay. Let's focus. Right, so we've got our bundle. Now, how do we add bundles, add components to our package? The answer is, and there's better ways of doing this, again, we're a work in progress here, we'll get a better way of doing it. I'm going to go to the component set that I want to install was installed using install. In fact, it was a fake one that I made, but you, if you go there, uh, users, projects, demo, I'm using this one called demo components. I, I want, because I was using Delphi product version 18, which is compatible with product version 19, which is what I also use, the BPL for that is located here. So I'm picking a compatible BPL for the version of Delphi that I want. I'm copying that. Again, it'd be nice if you do it with Git, but uh, I haven't got that far yet. We will soon, one day, perhaps, get there. Documents, uh, bundle, <coughs> no. <coughs> and of course, you only have to do this ever once um, for your project, maybe a few times if you update there. Thing. We've got this folder called Component Library. And so it makes a folder for us, the bundling tool does that, and it makes a folder with the Delphi version. So I can put that BPL in there. If I had copied it. Version 19 here, copy. Yes. Okay. That's it. We're ready to use that now. And what in theory you can then just write that straight out of your registry. Yep. So now I'll close that. So the reason I closed it is because, okay, I've, I've added it to my bundle, but I already loaded it. So, so I just have to go back and say, okay, I need to load it again. Now the way, you, the way you'd normally do this is um, when you want to work on a, a particular project, usually when you come in the morning you work on it for three or four months or something like that. So just make, uh, send to your desktop, create shortcut. So now I've got a link to my project bundle <coughs> and when I double click on that, it will run it for me and just load Delphi with the project and everything I need for the project in it. Uh, oh, I didn't save the thing before, I didn't save it, it's saying I deleted the check bundle thing again, which is fine. Okay, now, what are we going to do? We've got to look in here, components, install packages, oh, demo components. Wasn't there before? Pretty good? No, it's just there just because it's in the path. Nope, oh, it's not there because of that. What, what the check bundle program does, uh, just, I'll just clarify that. You see this check bundle exe? It does, it actually checks the bundle. It says, okay, what do I need? I need this, I need that. So you might have heard of um, NPM, or, which is the Node Package Manager, which is a basically installer for, um, for things for Node.js. And, and how that basically works is it looks at the, look at the thing called the project.json file, and it, it says, oh, what are my dependencies? What do I need to build this thing? And it says, oh, you need a, uh, you know, that thing, you need jQuery that, you need, oh, version 6.2.7 of that, yeah, oh, I haven't got that, Git, please give me that, so it puts it, it, puts it in the bundle, uh, it keeps going, it does, that's the kind of thing. So this check bundle is like a very poor man's version of that at this point, uh, but it does the trick. So what it actually did is, I remember I, remember I said, it, it, it's the, the key to those project files are in the in the uh, registry. So if you have a look in BDS version 18, this is why the inf versioning information is important. We're running Delphi 24, uh, but Pro here because it's product 18. That's why we need to know which version we're talking about. Um, and if we have a look in the known, uh, known, uh, known packages, and if we scroll down to the bottom of this, it now has this one in here, which it added. Now, unfortunately, it's added it with uh, 
crap information, so I'm going to delete that. I, say, say I didn't have it. So, you know, I can be a little bit. I just, I just need to restart one more time just to prove it, prove I'm not making it all up. So I've deleted it out of there. You saw me delete it. So if I start up again, oh yeah, one day I'm going to remember to save the project group. And when we get back to here, we go back here to components, install packages. Demo components back there. And then if we refresh the registry, and we look in there, it says using the active project environment variable that you said, um, the BPL path, that's where the component is. So the beauty of this, which uh, and I can see Scott's giving me a time out, time out. The beauty of this, which again I didn't get to show yesterday, was you can actually now solve that problem that I was talking about. You can have two versions of the same components loaded at the same time because the registry refers to a relative environment variable path to a BPL that might be a different version. So I could start a, a different version of Delphi and get a different version of those components completely independent of another copy of Delphi that I'm running over here. When you say a different version of Delphi, do you mean a different instance of the same you, version? You can, I actually, if I had time, I think we could do it all day, but I actually, the last part of my demo was normally you take this project, so I'm running uh, Berlin here. I take it, I paste it onto my other desktop, which is running Tokyo. Double click it, and it still works. What about on the same, uh, in the same machine? In the same you machine, with the you can run the same, you can start it, you can start it, just start a copy of Delphi, and start another copy of Delphi, and on the same machine, at the same time, you have two different versions of the components. And we say another, another copy of Delphi, like one instance of Berlin, another instance of Berlin? Or yeah, they, or Delphi 7, or... Yeah, yeah, different yeah, versions, yeah versions absolutely. The same version of I, I think I can do it. If, if, uh, if Scott, you want to go on, I'll... Uh, we're we only short, so I think we need to just talk through rather than showing a uh, demonstration of this. Yeah, but, yeah, so, so we could actually do that. Um, yeah, that is the demo I did actually yesterday. I had um, uh, Berlin running here with demo components version 2 and demo components version 1 side by side, ran both programs, by both compile, they both showed, and one said I'm using version 1 of the components, this one says version 2, at the same time. Both in Berlin. Both in Berlin, at the same time. On the same machine. On the same machine, same workstation. Okay. That, that's, that's <laughs>